So I've been uh, working a little bit on a project on corporate and public prayer, and it occurred to me that I have two friends who are authors on the subject of prayer. Dave Peaty has a, uh, a book on prayer published out there in the, uh, in the cloud. You can find it on Amazon for Kindle and I, iBooks and that sort of thing. Right. Merlin is uh, working on a book. It's, it's coming along. It's, there it it's, is. In, it's in that form at this point. Nice. On, uh, on prayer specifically focusing on the Lord's Prayer. And uh, as I was thinking about this, uh, this idea of corporate and public prayer and prayer meetings and that sort of thing, I thought maybe I'd get some of their input while they're here. So thanks guys. Well, it's great to be here. Excited to talk about this. Yeah. I'm excited to hear what you have to say. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, exactly. So, I mean, in, in both cases, neither of your, neither of your books are, are necessarily on corporate prayer. I don't know that they're necessarily focused on personal prayer either, but they, it feels like it's more personal prayer than pro corporate prayer. Yeah, probably. How do you think, uh, how do you think the work that you've done um, overlaps, intersects, works against the ideas, I don't know, of uh, prayer meetings or corporate prayer? You want to start? Well, <clears throat> I think that one of the areas in which they have a commonality is the idea of what is the purpose of prayer or what does prayer accomplish or what do we want prayer to accomplish. And whether you pray alone or pray in a group, the question is, what, what, what do you expect? What are you trying to accomplish? Mm -hmm. And I think um, that would be, could be the same for both corporate and, indi and individual. So what's your quick answer to that? So it, it seems that a lot of prayers, the prayers I catch myself praying, the prayers that I hear others pray, the prayers I hear people talk about, are prayers to get God to do something uh, or to let God know what needs to be done. And that seems to me to be really, really foolish. Right. I mean, I'm, I've written a book on the Lord's Prayer. I've written a first draft of a book on the Lord's Prayer. And the setup to that prayer, Christ says, don't speak long-windedly because to be think you'll be to think you'll be heard by lots of words, right. and your father already knows what you need before you pray. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean to make this as mean as it as it's going to sound, but it seems to me like a lot of times we pray like God is not real aware, hard of hearing, and a little difficult, and so we have to tell him what needs to be done, and then make some suggestions. Let's make some suggestions about. How, how we should how we take do. care of things. And so we treat, I think, it feels to me like I sometimes treat God like he's a somewhat hard of hearing senile grandfather that needs to be guided by me to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. And I think that fallacy or that problem can be the same in my individual prayers and in our corporate prayers. But in a prayer meeting, then we have like more people so we could be louder to get attention of the hard, hard of hearing one. And maybe he'll like one of us more than the other. So maybe he'll go ahead and do it because we got enough people together and... And we can reinforce each other's doing things so we can magnify our incorrectness. And that's in our language too. So if we have a need, we're gonna say, boy, I could really use some prayer right now. Yeah. I could really use more people praying for me right now. The utility of prayer. And it's kind of like, you know, if we could gang, so to your point, Merlin, if we can gang up on God and get his attention, then maybe he'll, maybe right. he'll act right. according to right. we want him, what we want him to do. And even in our individual prayers, this becomes, this is not an easy, <clears throat> an easy issue to deal with. I have a, a good friend whose wife, 12 or 14 years ago, was dealing with a very serious illness. She was dealing with cancer or mm -hmm. some horrible situation and yeah. he was praying for her and he, he had this concern that he wasn't praying enough. Right. If he had a 24-hour a, a mm -hmm. prayer vigil, if he, if he really, really, really prayed enough, then she would be healed. But if he didn't pray enough, then God would say, nah, sorry, you didn't, you didn't make it to the to, to, the critical mass of prayer, whatever that is. And 
Well, and I wonder if we don't come by those ideas honestly. How many sermons have we heard about, you know, the widow that that uh, bothers right. the unjust judge, right. or the person that needed food in the middle of the night, and so they kept knocking, knocking until this grumpy, tired person finally got out of bed and went down and opened the door and let them in and gave them food. And right. so I think we we you know we've come by those ideas kind of. Kind of honestly, where we, whereby we think, well, God is the grumpy <laughs> guy right. asleep, or or the unjust judge. But the idea that God knows our needs, mm -hmm. C.S. Lewis says something like, "Does absolute knowledge need to be informed? Then does absolute goodness need to be urged to do the right thing?" Hmm. Well, of course not. Right. And so, part of prayer, mm -hmm. in my limited understanding, is that we don't pray to get God to do something, we pray so that they can shape our hearts and our, and our readiness so that we can do something. And so the persistent prayer, if prayer is needed on a persistent, if we need to pray persistently, it's to prepare our hearts and our muscles and feet and hands to do what God wants us to do mm -hmm. and not to get God to act, it's to get us to act. So how does that work if we're thinking about corporate prayer and prayer meetings? So if that, so if we're going to change that, if we're going to change the perspective that even this persistency in prayer is to change us, and we think of that like an individual petition or prayer, what is, what's, the, what's the point of praying together with that same kind of perspective, do you think? I don't have much to say about corporate prayer because I've been focused on the Lord's Prayer. Yeah. And the Lord's Prayer is interesting because it says, go into your room by yourself and shut the door. The suggestion is that it's an inner room without windows so you won't be distracted. And then the Lord's Prayer, the prayer that Christ gave us, starts out by saying, our, which mm -hmm. suggests that it's a community prayer. Right. But, and so I've heard, I've talked to professors and lots of other people and they say that the word our makes that prayer a community prayer. Mm -hmm. I don't quite believe that or agree with that because the very clear commandment is pray by yourself, pray in solitude, pray so that you're not seen. Mm -hmm. And when you pray, pray as the member of a family, as right. a member mm -hmm. of a family. So even as I'm praying by myself, I'm praying our Father, which reminds me that I am not the only sailor on this ship. I'm not the only person in this family. I am part of a part of a community, part of a family, part of a church. And so now David is going to say, yeah. but it says where two or three are gathered together. So the idea of corporate prayer is certainly Yeah, but even that passage. Go ahead. Well, I was I was going to maybe just offer a little bit of a just a different camera yeah. angle. We're looking at the same thing, but maybe just with a, a different camera angle. Um, One that's in focus. I, well, I, I hope, <laughs> or sort of. Um, so first off, the, the idea of going into your closet and praying by yourself, I think that that was primarily a reaction by Christ against the, when you pray, don't do it to make a right. show for other people. So I, I think that that was a, a word of discipline related, related to that. Jesus, of course, as we know, spent nights, all nights, uh, alone right. is the word we'd use. So, so, you know, we're talking about corporate prayer today. So we say, well, how, you know, how does, how does Jesus own prayer? How does that model for us what we're supposed to do corporately? So here's, here's my little camera ang angle take. Um, what we understand about God, and it's hard to, it's hard to grasp. It's hard to understand, but God exists as we know the basic theology as a tri as a triune God. It's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And so this is a, a triunity, sometimes I call it, or a tri-community. Sure. They are in unity together, and, and you can prove this out even from the life of Christ. I mean, he never did one thing that his father didn't say. Uh, it was the Holy Spirit that came to reveal Christ to us. Uh, we know that the Holy Spirit guides us into truth and so on. And so... My basic understanding of God is, is that God actually, even Jesus going 
to pray by himself, that actually is corporate prayer, to, to, my, to my way of thinking. Right, because he's in the triunity. Because he, right, he's in the community sure. of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Now, I know he was Christ the man. I, I, I know that, fully man. But he was, he was identifying within that community. And so, uh, when, when we pray then, corporately, um, well, we'll put it this way. I'd rather, personally, I'd rather go into my prayer closet. I'd, I'd rather go secretly and pray. That's, that's just how I'm wired um, personality. But I, I still, even doing that, I have the sense of community because my, my view of intercession particularly is, is, like you said, Merlin, you know, sometimes we're trying to talk God into our way of thinking. Where, where I'm thinking what you're trying to say is, no, actually, prayer aligns us to his will. Jesus is the one who said, not my will, but thine be done. I mean, I'm, I, I want to join in with what you're doing. And so even, I know I'm, I'm a little over here right now, but, right. Even, but even, even intercession, what is that? Is it getting a bunch of people to agree, well, Sally needs healing, or Joe needs a job, or, you know, or... or so God, or, do that. So do it. Or is it saying, no, God, you... This, um, Jesus lives ever to make intercession for us. And so we're going to talk to him in community and say, right. Jesus, what is your will? We're going to lay down our ideas about what God's going to do, and we're going to align ourselves with those. So anyway, back, just back to this. Could I continue for a second? Yeah. So to me, corporate prayer then actually models the triune God. The God existing in community in a you know mutual admiration society, if you will, and his goal for us with Christ being the head of the church, the church is the body, and we're to emulate God. And so, actually, when we get together in corporate prayer, what it means is we are laying down our own you know agenda, we're laying down our own personality, we're gathering together, you know, uh, the idea of. of uh, how blessed it is for brethren to dwell in unity. It doesn't mean you have agreement in everything. It's, it's no, we're going to try to join the will of God. And so corporate prayer, to me, models, our, models God yeah. in, a, in a really beautiful way when we come together and we join in prayer. And to me, what you just said, I would take that <clears throat> quite a different direction. And that is, if, if, the, if the triune God in relationship, that's true, but that same dynamic then is in place when we are praying by ourselves. Yes. Because the sure. Holy Spirit yes. is coming alongside and counseling us. And you talked about praying to Jesus. The Lord's Prayer said we're supposed to pray to our Father. Right. And Christ is sitting at the Father's side making intercession before us. Right. So this relationship between Spirit, Son, and Father suddenly has a new member at the party, and that's us. We're now us. part of the conversation yes. individually. So I think that what you're suggesting about as a model of community prayer is actually a model of our private prayer, because when we pray individually, mm -hmm. it's not just us and the Father, it is us Joining. and the Spirit yeah, and sure. Christ right. all together. Yeah, that's well said. And, uh, Tim Keller in his book, The Reason for God, has a very fancy word about this relationship called perichoresis. It's this mm -hmm. idea of a, of a circle dance. Mm -hmm. And I th thought I would toss that in just so I would look smart. It does, it does make you sound very smart, perichoresis. But it's going to be taken right. out in the edit, so it's I don't think so. <laughs> it's there now. Yeah, I don't think either of you are wrong, right? I mean, one of the, one of the thing that, things that continues to get beat into me is that Christ died for us individually. God saves us individually. We have it. We do have a personal relationship with Jesus. We are saved one by one. But from then on out, mm -hmm. most every command uh, in, in the New Testament is to the to the community, to the body. Right. right. We're saved individually, but we're saved to be a people. We're born into that family. Yeah. So, so this yeah. idea of again, you know, like Merlin's point of that prayer is more about changing us than changing God's mind. Uh, I think corporate prayer is the same way. Mm -hmm. And that even though we might think of it as, hey, would would 
when other people come around me and let's yell, all yell at God together and get him to do what we want him to do. Mm -hmm. No, the same, the same point is true that when we come together as a body, that maybe corporate prayer, <clears throat> rather than being pretty vertical, like we think about it, let's all yell at God, mm -hmm. has way more to do with the horizontal. Mm -hmm. And that what we're doing together, I mean, one of the, I mean, because I've, you know, I've, I've begun to read Merlin's book and I've heard him talk about various chapters and I know that, that, um, that you know, like one of your main points of what you're doing with the Lord's Prayer is that, that with the Lord's Prayer, Jesus is inviting us into work <laughs> and giving us responsibility. Mm -hmm. And that I think that corporate prayer has a whole lot to do with the horizontal, the, 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 the work that we're doing among one another. So even for example, I mean, Merlin, you brought it up. You said this idea of you know, where two or three are gathered in my name. You know, uh, that is inexplicably in the, con or uh, undeniably, not inexplicably, undeniably in the context of fellowship and discipline. Right, that, that the agreement that Jesus is talking about mm -hmm. there is you guys figure out how someone needs to be disciplined. And when two or three of you bind that or loose that, because that's, that's in the verses ahead of that, then, then, uh, then I'll be in agreement with that. Yeah, you talked what, about it, that in the email that invited us to this. And right. I think that's a tremendously wise and, and, and astute observation, so. So this idea that, so that, that, the, that, the, <clears throat> that we have work to do horizontally, uh, you know, call the elders of the church together to pray for the sick. Mm -hmm. Again, that, that's about horizontal stuff. Now, I mean, I've, we're looking to God for the, the action, mm -hmm. but there's horizontal work to do there. And I'm, I, I wonder if the same pl principle applies that, that corporate prayer has more to do with improving the corporation. <laughs> Just like individual prayer has right. more to do with improving the prayer, not the... And thereby it's super messy. Yeah. It, it becomes <laughs> super messy. And it's but also... That's body life. And it's also uh, dependent on our actions or the word... I use the word... <clears throat> pardon me. I use the word participation a lot in this book. Mm -hmm. And it seems like, again, I've talked about that we, we keep trying to assign God to take care of stuff but you have kids, and I have been a kid. Some people say I, say I still are one. But as long as you have kids squabbling, and one kid will come to the mom and say, you know, Johnny's being mean to me, and the parent will say, you guys figure it out. Work, yeah. You work, work it, it out. out. Because the process of growing up and learning how to deal with people mm -hmm. requires that you work through these things. I think sometimes we forget that this idea of Christ telling us to be participants is not a new idea. That happens back in Genesis. Right. So God created the world and he said, y'all are in charge, take care of this. Mm -hmm. And we keep trying to, what's the word? Abrogate, abandon, get out of that responsibility. And, and John, you've got some, Dan has some quotations up on the, uh, the lobby of the church, but one of them is Christ saying, as the Father sent me, mm -hmm. I'm sending you. So this idea of responsibility and what we're supposed to, we're supposed to be doing something. We're not doing work to earn our salvation, that's by grace, but we're doing work to activate our faith, to serve each other, and... Deepen it, spread it, all of that. Hey, Dave, so Dave, you wrote this prayer primer book. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> primer or but, primer? Well, uh, it's like you say tomato, I say tomato. <laughs> so, <laughs> I guess. I mean, this is an unfair question, but like, what's the main point in one sentence? And can you make any applications to corporate prayer from the point of that that book? Well, it's gonna be hard to do it in a sentence. Yeah, that's okay. You know, I, However, I'm setting set the bar high. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you can just do whatever you the, need. I could use commas and semicolons. Take it yeah. down. Take it down a bit. <laughs> a Pauline sentence, if you will. <laughs> This, this book came out of my own personal prayer. So, again, that, we're not talking corporate. We're right. talking about me and the triune God. And, and that realization that, you know, Dave's will very often doesn't line up with the will of the Father. So, the entire book is 
Um, per, I, I've used them in person. I've personalized them so I can use them in the first person. But I've taken scriptures. I modeled it in the Lord's Prayer, actually, Merlin, and uh, went through the various sections of the Lord's Prayer, and then have added um, scriptures that I've been praying for years, specifically for my family, for myself, for the world, for others, and so on. And I pray through those prayers that Jesus gave me, mm -hmm. and that way. I know I'm aligning with the will of the Father. The, we, people say all the time, well, what's God's will? Well, well, just, read the book. <laughs> here, here, it is. here it is, yeah, right. you know. Yeah. And uh, so, so that's, that's the idea. And um, so, again, to, just to tie that into corporate prayer, um, I think that would be actually a wonderful, and I know we do it even in your church here, I think it would be a wonderful exercise for, for corporate prayer to say, okay, we all have our ideas, we all have our burning needs, but why don't we just all together line up behind the will of the Father? Pray the word. Pray and the pray the word. Yeah. Well, why not? It's not just meant to be read. There, it's we can pray it. So. And that, I mean, and of course, that's the way the church has often acted historically through His, the ages. Historically, right? And churches of our ilk in our time yeah. seem to think that the most spiritual thing that we can do is just wing it. Is not do that. Right. <laughs> so just, just all get together and let the spirit move and get in, jump in the river yeah. or get in the flow or whatever that is, sure. which is all fine and good. Yeah. But the, the pattern for history is often to pray the Psalter, pray the word. Yes, because we, we need or, a center to come back yeah. to, you know, and the longer we talk, obviously the more our own will is going to get involved. Yeah. <laughs> you pointed out a minute ago, I think correctly, that when Christ was telling people to pray in privately, he was combating this public show-offy prayer right. mm. of the Pharisees. And so, again, some of what I talk about is a reaction to my own childhood and younger years as a believer. Mm. And one of the things that initially confused me and then just simply irritated me was being in worship services where people said, shut out everybody around you and just concentrate on the Lord. Now, mm. that sounds good, except I can do that in private prayer. In corporate prayer, I need to be aware of those around right. me and talking to. And if you imagine yourself at a concert or at a sporting yeah. event <laughs> exactly. by yourself, the energy wouldn't be the same. There no. would be no home field advantage if David was the only person at a Mariners game. Right. Right. But what happens is, you know, this, what's the old line? Joy shared is halved, no, is, is doubled, sorrow shared is halved. You're at a sporting mm -hmm. event and somebody does makes a great play and you just look at each other and you go, did you see that? And we're high-fiving and... Yeah, and so our appreciation, our understanding, yeah. our joy is enhanced uh -huh. and increased by mm -hmm. sharing it. And so that idea of corporate prayer, isolating us from each other, uh, I think we miss out. We miss out. By, yeah, by, that's good. And sometimes we... So if we're going to get together, we might as well give God the home field advantage. We, and, and, and we might as well like and <laughs> double our other. joy and half our sorrow. Yeah, right. that's. So I was watching a thing. I don't normally watch a lot of church stuff on television, partly because I don't watch a lot of television, period. But I was watching a show by a famous televangelist who was talking about some men in her church who were praying that God would meet a need. So they were in a group prayer, mm -hmm. and these men were praying Lord, meet this need. And one of them stopped and said, hold it. Wait a minute. We've all got some money. We could do it. We can just do this. We don't need to pray about this. Yeah, that's we can just do it. And I think there's this idea that prayer is the ultimate act. That if we pray about something, we've handed it off to God, and that's the end of the deal. Mm -hmm. I would suggest, humbly, well, not so humbly. I would suggest that <laughs> prayer is the penultimate, the second to the last yeah. act. We pray about it, and sometimes God will say, sounds good to me, go ahead and do it. Well, how do you figure it out? Yeah. I mean, I love the passage where yeah. Christ says to pray, the, wheels are, the fields are white to harvest, pray that the Lord will send workers. That's not a prayer that I don't think you can honestly pray for very long before you pray, send me. Lord, send me. Isaiah, the Isaiah prayer. And yeah. if you do pray that, then you can't say, well, what part of the field do you want me to go to, Lord? And do you want me to get a combine or do you want me to? Because at that point, God is saying, 
y'all work it out. Just, Just work it out. Get out there. Fig do figure, it. figure it out because we've been commissioned and entrusted as stewards. We have the responsibility. Right. And. That's really good. No, you're absolutely right, Merle. I mean, we, I mean, we just know from our own experience, and we even know from, uh, I mean, you know, the, the examples in the Bible. There are times when God does the truly miraculously extraordinary all by Himself stuff, right? Manna from heaven. But even, but even that, you know, it's funny because I, because I, I say that, and you know, but even that. So yeah, He sends manna from heaven, and then you know, you read the account. There are there are instructions on how to prepare it. So you go out, you pick it, and then you do this with it and do this with it, and except one day a week you do double because you're not gonna have, yeah. you'll have plenty mm -hmm. to There's get you through involved. the Sabbath day. There's work involved, but, mm -hmm. so what I was gonna say was, yeah, God, oft, God does do miracles that are maybe entirely or at least predominantly or mostly him, but for the most part, the way that God gets his work done is with people. <laughs> and even, even in his miracles, when I was first starting this book, I was talking about bread give us this day our daily bread yeah <clears throat> and talking about manna and i thought manna was like a hot cross bun that they just plucked and ate <laughs> and manna is like a resin and it has to be harvested it has to be processed yeah. and it has to be baked mm. bake uh, bacon manna requires as much participation on our part as it does mm -hmm. uh as, as, as bread does. Mm -hmm. And even Christ's miracles. I mean, I was talking to a friend of mine at breakfast about this idea of participation, and he just kind of smiled at me, and he was a wise man. And I think he wanted to reach over and pat me on the head and say, hey, you're, you're learning, little boy. But <laughs> he said, even in Christ's miracles, the very first miracle, the wedding at Cana, there are these big jars, and he said <clears> to the servants, go fill them with water. Mm -hmm. And they were heavy, and they had to, I mm -hmm. assume, go to a well, and that was a lot of work. I think that God could have taken, Christ could have taken the relative humidity in the air and condensed it sure. into the jars. He could have done the whole thing, but he didn't. He let us be, mm. he let us participate in even, in even that miracle. Right. Hmm. And I think somebody talked about even at the resurrection of Lazarus, he said to people standing by, roll back the stone. Yeah. He could have done Jesus magic and had the stone roll away, could, but that would have been even been cooler, right? So the stone rolls away without oh, any yeah, hand, yeah. human hands and, oh, right, yeah. angels sing. <laughs> but he doesn't work that way. Again, this little essay by C.S. Lewis <laughs> called The Efficacy of Prayer, he talks about that he lets, God lets us do poorly and slowly what he could do more quickly and better. Efficient. But the way... I, I get this image of a four-year-old girl helping her mom make cookies right. or a four-year-old boy helping his dad change the oil in a car. The parent could do it better without the help of the child, mm -hmm. but they want to include the child because it's training for the child and it's hanging around, hanging out with the child. It's fellowship with the child. I see you in relationship to your sons and any excuse to spend time with sure. the sons. Now, in your case, your son Donnie is behind the cameras here helping. Right, right now. And he's, he's, he's doing okay. He's doing, a, <laughs> he's doing a great job, but it's fun to have, yeah. it's fun to have him around. Yeah. Right. And so. Maybe the Lord feels the same way about us. Because it's, it's, it's not just out. about doing the work, it's about the relationship <laughs> as we work together. Absolutely. I came across a psalm the other day that to me kind of reinforces that point. Everybody knows the psalm about uh, uh, unless the Lord builds the house, they that labor, labor in vain. Sure. So there's this participation built into the Old Testament. Uh, I was reading something the other day. I didn't realize that Psalm 90 is a prayer of Moses. I didn't. I'm ignorant. I didn't know that Moses wrote a He's psalm. He's in there. Yep. Yeah. A couple times. So, I mean, we've all heard the psalm about... Uh, Unless the Lord builds the house, right. they that labor, labor in vain. So there's definitely the sense of participation between God and us. And I just, I came across a, a psalm the other day that I had never noticed before. It's the one that's got, teach us to number our days. And it ends by saying, let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands among us, upon us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. And so that kind of 
helps tie this thing together. The work we do uh, still needs God to to make it work. I mean, mm -hmm. a, 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 we need to understand that when we do the work, it's not us doing all the work. We are always working in cooperation mm -hmm. with God. And so to try to tell God, you take care of it is wrong. To try to take it all upon ourselves and do it by ourselves is wrong. Mm -hmm. We need to work, as Christ said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. The process of working with God is is key and, and maybe I've, it may be the, the and and to make that to have that corporate perspective the the point that we're working together with god right. if yes. uh, in in our prayer gatherings prayer meetings prayer groups sure yeah. and i have a friend that would suggest that it's not just the meeting part or the praying part or the talking part where this communication happens. It also happens in the working part. Right. That we pray as we're working. Sure. So in a sense, the prayer meeting is like a meeting and then we go off to work, but we still talk to each other. And some of my mm -hmm. best times of working are because of the interaction I have with coworkers mm -hmm. and I wonder, I wonder if this partly explains to why prayer sometimes is our last resort. Right. You know, we, like when I'm in real big trouble or something, then I, w I will pray. And I, you know, I sometimes have the, well, I don't, but uh, Frank Sinatra's version, you know, I prayed it my way. Right. You, you've, heard, you've heard that little song maybe. Right, right. And um, the, the nature that, or, or the idea that we need each other, we are dependent upon one another and uh, I think that um, the, the corporate aspect just brings that up for each one of us. Yeah, and if we could discipline right. ourselves to not just have those kinds of last prayer meetings, you know, the penultimate step to our demise, you yeah. know, the last resort, yeah, yeah, yeah. but if we could discipline ourselves to pray at the beginning and throughout our work together, mm -hmm. <laughs> that seems like that would probably be the, the the more God honoring and even effective way. Yeah, and as Merlin's pointing out, you know, God's the initiator, God's the sustainer, then God's the finisher at the end of the project. Right. He's, he's, the, he's the whole thing. And so I think our corporate prayer, to my view, is okay, well, let's get in on that. Right. <laughs> let's not wait till he's almost finished or, be, or, you know, we've got some new idea that he can't solve or something. No, he. There are new, no new ideas that he can't solve. Right. So let's let's get into the flow of what he's that's doing, good. and let's and let's be in that flow together. Yeah, that's good. And that models who he is. Yeah, that's good. Hey, thanks for watching this. If uh, if you want to jump in, you have a comment. I'll put this up on the blog, so there'll be a way to comment. And I do want to encourage you. Uh, pay attention to the work that Dave and Merlin is doing. Uh, we'll put uh, some websites uh, along the bottom there so you can uh, check out uh, Dave and his book and speaking engagements and that sort of thing and keep a, an eye on Merlin's blog and uh, you'll uh, hmm. continue to see things that are coming out of the book and eventually when the book is ready, you'll know that it's uh, available by checking that out. So continue to enjoy, continue to join us in this, uh, in this work on, uh, on praying well together. Thanks.